Previously, we looked at oriented curves in the plane and we looked at parametrized surfaces. Now, so now we wanna put those two ideas together and talk about oriented surfaces. So before we get started, let's recall what we mean by the orientation of a curve. So we say that a curve C is positively oriented if the region that it is bounds is to the left as you walk around it. So in other words, if we're walking along this curve, the region that it bounds is to the left. So now let's go ahead and see if we can extend that to surfaces. So let's say we have a surface parameterized by this vector valued function r, u, v, where we're taking our inputs u and v from a region d, which is in the plane. So the surface, so this vector valued function, it bends this flat region in the plane up into three dimensions. Okay, so the next thing that we want to notice is that we can get a good handle on some tangent vectors to this surface. So let's maybe go to this point right here and notice that we can find two tangent vectors pretty easily. One like that and one like that, but those are going to be related to the partial derivatives of this vector valued function with respect to u and v. Another thing that we might be interested in finding is a normal vector, and I'll just write in the normal vector like this, and if you recall what we did uh, with tangent vectors to surfaces, normal vectors to surfaces, tangent planes, so on and so forth earlier in the course, we know that this uh, unit normal vector is related to these tangent vectors in the following way. So n hat is equal to um, ru cross rv over the magnitude of ru cross rv. So let's talk through that. So why is that a normal vector? Well, we're taking two things that are tangent to the to the surface. In other words, they're parallel to the surface. We take their cross product and we get something that is perpendicular to each of them and that's perpendicular to the surface. And then we divide by that magnitude in order to make it into a unit vector. Okay, and then this thing right here, this unit normal vector, is what we think of technically as the orientation of the surface. So instead of really having a positive orientation or a negative orientation, the orientation is given by the unit normal vector itself. But that being said, generally there is some sort of positive or negative way to think about this and that is in the following way. So a surface is positively oriented if n hat, in other words this unit normal vector, points outward from the region it bounds. So if it doesn't bound a region, then this is not a great way to think about it, but often things bound a region or they get close to bounding a region, like this picture right here. Notice this unit normal vector is pointing out from whatever's inside this upside down bowl. Okay, so let me go ahead and erase the board and we'll look at an example. So for our example, we want to look at a cylinder of radius 2 and a height 3, and we'll just say it's going up the z-axis. So let's maybe uh, draw together a little picture for it. So let's say we've got there our x, y, and our z-axis. So the cylinder uh, has the following look to it. So let's say that's happening down there in the x, y plane, and then it goes up three units here along the z-axis. So that makes this point here three, and then these points here two and two along the x and the y-axis. Okay, good. And so another thing to think about is that this is just the shell of the cylinder. It's not the interior. So we can parametrize this taking inspiration from, so, from cylindrical coordinates, but let's recall that cylindrical coordinates will make all of R3, but we only want to be on this cylinder of radius 2. So that means we can take our parametrization to be uh, the following setup. So our variables will be theta and z, and we'll take this to be uh, 2 cosine theta, 2 sine theta, and then z. 
So recall that the standard cylindrical coordinates have x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, and z equals z. Well, we've done that exactly. We just fix ourselves to a radius of two, and that puts us on the surface of this cylinder. And then also, we can have theta in the interval 0 to 2 pi, and then we can have z in the interval 0 to 3 in order to make sure we draw the whole thing all the way around. That would be the angle, and we want it to be only three units high. That would be z going from 0 to 3. So let's maybe call this uh, r1 um, because I want to parameterize this another way in order to uh, see what the orientations look like. And so I'll parameterize this in the following way. So let's say r2 theta z is equal to uh, 2 sine theta, 2 cos theta, and then finally z. So I've just swapped my x and the y coordinates. But notice that's still going to draw this cylinder. It's just going to draw it in another orientation. And then my theta and z values are the same, so I won't rewrite those. So let's go ahead and calculate the unit normal vector here, which means we need to calculate r theta cross rz, the partial with respect to theta and the partial with respect to z. So r1 theta cross r1z. So notice that is going to be equal to we need to do this guy right here, so i, j, k, and then we'll have uh, the derivative with respect to theta here, so that's going to be minus 2 sine theta, we have 2 cos theta, and then we have 0, the derivative with respect to z, 0, 0, 1. So let's notice that in the first component, we're going to get whatever the determinant is from crossing that out, so we'll get 2 cosine theta. And then in the second component, we get uh, the determinant of the 2 by 2 by crossing that out, but we've got to put a minus sign to it, so we're going to get 2 sine theta. And then in the last component, we'll get 0. Another thing to notice is that the magnitude of this vector is easily seen to be 2, which means we can just divide by 2, and that'll give us our unit normal vector n1, and that's just uh, cos theta sine theta comma 0. So let's draw this in this picture up here. Notice that's going to be outward uh, um, pointing. And so here if we go up to this point, that's going to be pointing like this. So that'll be our N1. So I'll underline that in purple. And so why is that? That's because, notice this point here on the surface is defined by 2 cos, 2 sine, and then z. And so the 2 cosine and the 2 sine are already taking us from the z axis out here. And then this thing just keeps us pointing in that direction out. Okay, good. So now let's look at the other parameterization. So no, now for the other parameterization, we need to do r2 theta cross r2z. So notice uh, we'll have to take the determinant of our 3 by 3 tool for taking the cross product again. But notice that in this case, we're going to have uh, minus, sorry, we're going to have 2 cosine theta minus 2 sine theta. Uh, 0 and then 0, 0, 1. And then I'll skip a step and just jump to n2 hat. I'll let you guys go ahead and take the cross product. And then notice that it has magnitude 2 again. And in this case, we're going to get minus sine theta minus cosine theta 0. Okay, so now let's look at that. Notice here, our point is given by 2 sine, 2 cosine z, but then our vector is minus sine, minus cosine. So the idea here is this thing puts us on the edge of the surface, but then the unit normal points us inside. So that would be n hat. So, sorry, n hat 2. Okay, so here are two nice examples, one with an inward pointing normal and one with an outward pointing normal. Generally, we want um, an outward pointing normal because that'll work with kind of the theorems that we look at later and the calculations that we do later. I'm going to go ahead and erase the board and we're going to look at another example. So for our next example, we want to look at the cone z equals x squared plus y squared, which we've seen before and we talked about why it's a cone because it kind of looks like the absolute value function when you put your hand over one variable at a time. So that gives us that straight look. Okay, so we can parameterize this two different ways. So we can parameterize it just using the fact that it's a function of x and y as x comma y comma root x squared plus y squared. 
So that's maybe the simplest way to do it. And then also we can realize that in spherical coordinates, the equation of this cone is just phi equals pi over four. So recall that phi is the angle from the positive z-axis, but this thing is halfway between the positive z-axis and the xy plane, which makes it 45 degrees or pi over four. But putting this into our spherical coordinates, we'll have r of, now we need uh, rho comma theta, because those are our leftover variables, after we fix phi to be equal to pi over four. So that's going to be uh, rho times uh, cosine theta times sine pi over four, but that's gonna be one over root two, so we can put uh, rho over root two here. And then similarly, we'll have rho over root two sine theta. And finally, we'll have rho over root two here because that's just rho cosine phi. So let's just recall that spherical coordinates are given by x equals rho cosine theta sine phi. Um, y is rho sine theta sine phi. And z is rho cosine phi. And so we went over that before, so I don't want to labor that. But if you set phi to be equal to pi over four, which puts us on this cone, then we get an alternate parameterization for it like this. So you can take either of these and um, they'll work. Okay, so we're actually going to work with this one because I think it's a little bit simpler. So let's go ahead and calculate these partial derivatives. So notice r sub x is equal to 1, 0, and then we're going to have uh, x over the square root of x squared plus y squared, just uh, using uh, the chain rule. And then uh, similarly, r sub y is going to be 0, 1, and then y over root x squared plus y squared, again using the chain rule. But now putting this together, that gives us our unit normal vector. Well, we're not quite ready to do our unit normal vector. Let's go ahead and do the cross product. So rx cross ry, so that'll be i, j, k, and here we have 1, 0, x over root x squared plus y squared. 0, 1, y over root x squared plus y squared. Good. So now let's go ahead and see what we get. So if we do this cross out to see what's happening in the, in the uh, first component, that's going to give us um, negative x over root x squared plus y squared, like that. And then what's happening in the second component? That's what we get from crossing this with that. We're going to get negative y over root x squared plus y squared. And then finally, in the last component, we're just going to get 1. Great. Now, let's go ahead and see what the magnitude of that is. So if we take the magnitude of rx cross ry, so that's going to be equal to the square root of x squared over x squared plus y squared plus y squared over x squared plus y squared plus 1. So that's pretty easy to see. It's this squared plus this squared plus that squared, but then you take the square root of the whole thing. That's how you find the magnitude of a vector. But notice that these two guys add together just to give us 1. And so we get the square root of 1 plus 1, which is the square root of 2. And so now, notice that tells us that our normal vector is just this guy divided by the square root of 2. So our normal vector is equal to let's see, negative x over root 2 times root x squared plus y squared, and then negative y over root 2 times root x squared plus y squared, and then finally 1 over root 2. So we've got something like that going on. So notice the z component is always the same, and then the x component and the y component depend on x and y. So now let's see how this is pointing. So notice the z component is making it point kind of up. So we know that this thing is a normal vector, given like the calculation that we did. It's the cross product of two tangent vectors. So we know that this is a normal vector, but there are only two possible normal vectors. There's one pointing out from the cone or in towards the cone. But we have two hints that this one is the one pointing in towards the cone, and that is the fact that the z component is positive. And since the z component is 
positive, then that means this, it's kind of pointing in the upward direction in the z direction. But if it's going outward, then it's pointing downward in the z direction. So that gives us a hint that this thing is actually pointing in to the cone. Um, and then maybe another hint is the fact that we have negatives here, which tells us we're pointing in towards the origin, which is exactly what would happen if we were pointing in towards the z-axis from the surface of the cone. Okay, so now you might want to ask is, can you always find an orientation for a surface? In other, in other words, is this unit normal vector always like a well-defined thing? And in fact, it's not. And one good example of that is a Mobius strip. So I'll put a little animation on the screen showing a Mobius strip, but you can build one for yourself just by taking a strip of paper, turning it, and then taping it to itself. And notice if you think about a normal vector pointing out from this surface, as you go around one loop, the normal vector will go from pointing this way to this way, which means there's no good orientation for the Mobius strip. Okay, that's a good place to end.